you're listening to another episode of the Just Go Bike Podcast. That's AKA Murph. And that's AP. And this is the podcast where we talk about cycling just for the fun of it with tales from all over the nation. Come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. Hello, hello, AP, and welcome back, listeners, to part two of RegBry QA. Why, hello, listeners. I'm happy to be back talking RegBry. All right. So we had so many frequently asked questions. We decided to turn this into a two-part. And we left off talking about just the value of RegBri registration and, you know, what you get for it. And it's still kind of, I don't know, mind-boggling how much goes into RegBri and that the cost is only 200 bucks. Well, that's what I think. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) there's really a lot of stuff. There's just an incredible amount of planning. Uh, there's more people on the RAGBRAI team than you would think. Right now we have four full-time staff members mm-hmm. and we are hiring to double that number of wow. people. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's just incredible. It's, and that doesn't even include each overnight town has a committee of, I don't know, dozens of people and include, and then hundreds of volunteers on top of that. Mm-hmm. And then there's also committees in each of the pastor towns, each of the meeting towns and volunteers on top of that. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't even include the vendor, the many vendors that come and join us along the route, like Mr. Porkchop or the Iowa Beer Bus or the Craft Beer Tent. There's just an incredible number of people that go put a lot of hard work into producing this ride. I agree completely. Okay, yeah. so uh, let's just say I'm registered for RAGBRAI. I'm sold. I love all the different um, benefits I get from registering. Um, a question that gets asked a lot can I bring my significant other who's not going to ride? Maybe they're going to be the support driver or maybe they just want to see what it's all about. Well, are they fun? (laughs) (laughs) Then yes. Let's just say yes. Okay. Just kidding. It can be anyone. Yes. You absolutely can bring someone along with you on the ride. Um, You would call that a non-rider and they would have their own wristband. Um, I would say, why would you get a wristband? If you're not riding, well, here's your answer. Because they want to get into those really cool concerts. Oh, yeah. They want to get a discount on food. And they want to be allowed into the main campground with their vehicle. Okay. Because I, if especially if they're the support vehicle driver. Um, you can also get a, ve- a pass for your vehicle, which is really important. Again, because you want to park in that main campground mm-hmm. where you're going to have easy access to all the different amenities. So the non-riders, they get a lot of perks. It's a lot of fun to come along ride by as a non-rider, especially if you kind of want to get the idea of rag bri but not you're not committed to doing all the riding Mm -hmm. i know some people who will trade on and off with the ride one day then they'll drive the next day and then they'll do vice versa with their friend or their partner or whoever Mm -hmm. it's kind of a fun way to do it if you're not totally sure that you want to ride for a whole week and it's also nice because if you have a non-rider they could drive your van or their your suv or maybe even your team bus so that you have a little bit more of the comforts of home instead of camping. Mm -hmm. Um, And you're not um, restricted to just one significant other or support driver. I mean, let's just say you've got, you know, your husband and kids that are coming along and maybe they don't ride yet. Um, You know, wouldn't it be great if they came along and brought the RV and had dinner waiting for you when you got done? Yeah. Yeah. You could jump in the shower and, you know, and then immediately start playing board games or whatever the kids yeah, want to exactly. do. Yeah, exactly. We always played euchre. Oh, did so, you? <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. I'm euchre shark. But so it's also kind of the answer to another frequently asked question that's not on our list, or at least I haven't seen it on the list. That is, how do I get a hotel on Rag Bri? <laughs> oh, yeah. And I laugh because sometimes we go through towns that have 2,000 people. They may not have a hotel or they may have a motel that has 10 rooms. And as you can imagine with... 10,000 people, those rooms sell out near immediately. Uh, so it's not like a different event where you, there would be plenty of hotel rooms and it would be reasonable to expect to stay in hotels mm-hmm. or even to expect to stay in an Airbnb type scenario. Um, so I think a SUV or not SUV, an RV would be a reasonable way to sort of have the comforts of home Yeah. If when hotels aren't available. Yeah. And I, I've seen it many places where it's defined, you know, RAGBRAI itself is defined as a camping event. So yes. you are not going to be in five-star hotels. I mean, this is 
Iowa. It's usually yeah. rural Iowa. So like you said, you can't go to a population 2000 and expect, you know, to have right. uh, chocolate on your pillow. I, I don't think there's Four Seasons hotels in any of the overnight towns that I've ever been to. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe there are, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But yeah. they're, they're, it's not the Ritz. It's not fancy hotels. I mean, maybe there's nice hotels, but I'll tell you, you're more likely to expect to stay in a four-star RV or tent. <laughs> yes. Well, and it's, yeah. you know, if you go in with the mindset, this is a camping event. So mm -hmm. it's um, part of the um, the challenge of the week, right? You have to ride your bike every day, and then you take a shower, and then you immediately start sweating again, and then you have to lay in a hot tent and do it all again the next day and you know i, I always I, I wouldn't say it's a challenge i would say it's the magic of the event <laughs> okay the magic yeah yeah, yeah. there yeah. there's definitely a time every year on ragbri when i second guess why i would spend vacation time doing that yeah but i quickly forget all the bad things and uh as you know as you know i cannot wait till the next one yeah that's right um one of the popular terms that my family has about ragbri is the ragbri toothbrush where your toothbrush is so gross by the end of ragbri that you have to throw it away because <laughs> you've packed it into your suitcase so many times in the hot summer sun yeah and it spends time just sitting out there baking and it's just like it's fine for one week right ragbri standards it's great but it's not gonna you're not gonna want to use it when you get back to the comforts of home oh, man. but yeah and it really is fun and you really can kind of do it your own way there is we also offer homestays with different people in the overnight communities. Mm -hmm. That would be where you either stay in their home or you camp in their yard and get to use their shower and bathroom. Or maybe you camp, you park your RV in their yard and just get to use some of their amenities. I mean, and some even go so far as to cook you food. Or one time we stayed with a home homeowner in one of the towns that took us out on a boat ride. Oh, wow. I mean, it just kind of depends on who's available and who's willing to house you and We'll have, again, we'll have a match out uh, on social media where you can sort of put out that, hey, I'm a mother and daughter traveling on Ragbri and we'd like to look for a home. Or if you're a homeowner, you could say, hey, I have a big house and I have room for 20 campers or a RV who's interested. And that will all come out later down the line when everyone has the plans together. Okay. So that will be on the ragbri.com website. And yep. like, what what is it called? Not home sharing, but like, what do you call that? Um, I would call that homestays or homestays. Um, okay. Yeah. Host accommodations. Yeah. There'll be something online. Okay. And again, yep. none of those communities yet know they will be hosting RAGBRAI. So it's, it's not going to be something that you can plan for in January or maybe even February. So, no. you know, try and um, get your mind wrapped around, you know, these people don't even know that we're all, yeah. <laughs> Shh, don't tell them we're coming. Yeah. And then once, if, oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I think if you want to start planning in February, then you need to start talking to your friends and see whose friends of friends of friends have yeah. relatives in the towns. Yes. That's, that would be the way to start planning. Yes. Please do not contact the RAGBRAI committees at that point and pester them because they're trying to get all their stuff together and they're trying to wrap their minds around hosting a giant event. Mm -hmm. They're just not ready that early in the game, but they will be. They're going to be there for you. There's going to be options. Um, or the worst that could happen is you camp. Yeah. So, which is yeah. not the worst. I mean, it's still, that's when you meet people, when everyone's kind of yes. like, you know, unzipping their tent at five o'clock in the morning. You're like, oh my gosh, who is it? Who yeah. is zipping their tent? And then you realize <laughs> you are too. <laughs> yes, I know exactly. Or who's crinkling their Ziploc bags or yes. who's who's in their tent brushing their teeth so loudly? <laughs> yes, yes. But, you know, it's funny that you do that because when I was younger, when I first started doing ragbri with my mom, we did homestays every time and it's really fun. It's really special, but we ended up camping that my family camps now because it, like you said, it's where you meet a lot of people. You meet yeah. a lot of friends. Yeah. You see all of your old friends. They're all there camping together. It's sort of like summer camp where uh, it's just really fun. And it, even with the negative things that we've mentioned or the heat or whatever, it's better in a way. To I, camp. Nope. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay, so. so let's say I'm registered, and for some weird reason, you know, maybe I can't go. It doesn't even matter what the reason is, but can you sell or transfer RAGBRAI credentials? Absolutely, you can. 
And that transfer window will open up on June 1st, Okay, I believe, which is when the wristbands have been, all the numbers have been assigned. Registration is over, red numbers have been assigned. So you can unofficially sell or buy the wristband, but you can't lock in those credentials until after that point where we'll have a form on our website. Okay. <clears throat> if you're looking for a wristband or if you want to sell a wristband, popular places to do that would be on the RAGBRAI site. We have a forum. Um, and if you go to RAGBRAI.com, there's a little button for it. Okay. Or you could go to... Um, RAGBRAI has a fan page and it's called RAGBRAI L and then it has the dates of RAGBRAI. So if you just search for that, it'll come up and make sure you're looking at the group and not the event. Okay. There's two different mm -hmm. pages with similar names. So go to the group and make a post there and, or look for posts to see if there's somebody who you might be able to match with. That's a really popular and easy way to do that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Especially this year, I should say that there's no problem buying or selling a wristband mm -hmm. because there's we had plenty available. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Popular newbie question. Is there an official start time each day? Oh, well, you know, there is. Our starting time is 6 a.m. every day, uh, but there is no starting line. We don't, Matt Pippen doesn't stand at the starting line and shoot a little gun and then <laughs> everyone go. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's can you imagine? Like it would be kind of, actually be kind of fun if we did it that way. But Well, let me, I'm going to give you a little side story. I did the five borough bike ride in New uh -huh. York City, um, where we went to each of the five boroughs. And it was a, like what you just described, it was like a shotgun start. And uh -huh. guess how many people do the five boroughs bike ride? Oh, I know it's thousands. I don't know how many. 35,000. Oh, my God. So <laughs> once the gun goes off. Um, I, it probably took me another 45 minutes to get to the, you know, the start line and it was white knuckle the whole day. So I'm very oh. thankful that rag bride does not have a starting line every day. Yeah. Well, and if you think about the camping arrangements that we just talked about, people are staying mostly in the main campground, but then also throughout the whole town. So it wouldn't be, wouldn't necessarily make sense for everybody to go bike somewhere, mm -hmm. meet up and then start. It makes more sense to head wherever the route is closest to where you're camping. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds a little bit iffy as a newbie, but it, I my strategy was always to just start biking. And then if I see any other bikers, follow them. And it worked every time. <laughs> and I agree because I do the exact same thing where, yeah, yeah. Or if you end up going the wrong way, you'll meet bikers who are also going the wrong way. And then you make new friends because yeah. we're like, well, should we go this way? Should we go that way? Yeah. Oh, hee hee. We're going the wrong way. Yeah. We do provide maps so mm -hmm. you can see in general where you start. You can aim towards, I don't know, Route 66 or whatever it is that mm -hmm. where it starts. So you will have a general starting point. And then once you're on the route, again, we'll have the route signage. It'll be very easy to follow. And that's actually the next question. Um, once I do find the route each morning, so I can start at 6 a.m. I can start at 9 a.m., right? I can start whenever mm -hmm. I want. Yep, okay. exactly. And then once you kind of figure out, or let me rephrase that, how do you know when you're on the route besides the thousands of other bikes that are also <laughs> on the route? Well, so when you get onto the route, they will have big orange arrows. And if you're colorblind, they do say rag by route on them. So you should be able to just follow those arrows exactly where you need to go. They're not uh, all like frequent along the route. They're at major turning points or... Mm -hmm. Um, after cross sections, so they're where they need to be. But if you've ridden for a couple of miles and you haven't seen one, that's okay. Don't panic. It just means that there haven't been any places to turn off mm -hmm. on the route. Or if you look down the road, it's a little rinky dinky gravel road, and you would never assume that that was part of the route anyway. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, and in yeah, my so they, in my opinion, they're very easy to see. Um, they're very easy to understand. You know, they have if the arrow if you're turning, the arrow is actually pointing to the way to turn. So I feel like it was pretty easy to understand. And I think it's a good time to give a shout out. Like there actually has to be a person or people that mm -hmm. put those signs up, right? Yes. We have a mother daughter team who does our route signs each year. And they just recently took over from a husband wife team. So it used to be Deb and Mark and they're amazing. They did it for years and years and years and years. And then they retired and Maddie and Tanya took over the route marking there. Some of my, all four of them are some of my favorite team members because they're willing to get up early. They stay up late. 
they're out there marking the route at like 4 a.m. Wow. Because remember, they have to do the ragby route before the riders get there. Yeah. But then they also have to do the vehicle route. And then if there's a loop or a gravel day, they have to sign that as well. Mm. So they're out there like standing in ditches. They're staying, they're like <laughs> doing acrobatics to try to reach the poles. So that's another reason why you think, oh, I, you, there really should be a sign there. I wonder why there's not. Well, maybe they couldn't reach it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're absolutely average, normal sized people. They're not, you know, short or anything, but like they just, they can only reach so many places. So, yeah. Okay, good. So and... shout out to Tanya and Maddie. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Tanya and Maddie, for all that you do. And that's a good segue into, you know, so there's a route that Ragbri follows. All the bikers go on that route. But then you made mention of a vehicle route. Will you explain what that is? Yes. So if you have your non-rider along with you and they have a vehicle, they may not ride, drive their vehicle on the Ragbri route. It is extremely frowned upon because it's dangerous. A, it's dangerous. And B, it would be incredibly annoying because you'd be going five miles an hour the whole way. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense. So we have a special route just for the vehicles where they drive essentially parallel to the route and they have their own special way. And it's usually shorter, which is kind of funny because it doesn't matter because you're going way faster anyway than a bike. But (laughs) so they take their vehicle route and they will stop every day. If you want to meet up with your riders, there's a meeting town every day. And that's the point at which the riders and the vehicles meet. And it's safe. They, the, they come still parallel to each other even then. Mm-hmm. But they're both in the same town. They're easy access to each other. So if you're hungry, if you ran out of money, if you have mechanical issues, if you're just cranky and you don't want to ride, you meet up with your people and you uh, stop there. So, okay. Easy yeah. enough. So, yeah. And then the vehicles will continue on and the signage will lead them to the main campground. And then from there, you can go to wherever you plan on parking, whether it's the main campground or the RV campground or someone's home or whatever. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the vehicle route. And a quick note about that meat town, which I used to, I call the lunch town. It's not always (laughs) right at lunchtime, but it's, you know, roughly half ish way across the Mm day. Um, Some of those small towns can't accommodate, you know, 15, 20,000 cell phones working Mm. at the same time. And so um, when I used to meet up with a support vehicle or our team bus, we always made some sort of um, general rule, like we'll be parked behind the church, you know, so you just have to get into a town, ask a local where the church is, and then hopefully your driver has also found the same church. Or yes. if there's a gas station, or um, if you can look at a map ahead of time and say, okay, we're going to find a uh, third street and something, and we'll meet yes. there. So. It's, it is doable without phones. I mean, think about it. We all lived without phones. Well, maybe not everybody listening to this, but most of <laughs> yeah. us yeah. went through a phase in our lives where we lived without phones, you know, at our uh, beck and call. Yeah, that's a fantastic point. I would say pretty much anytime you want to meet up with people, plan it ahead of time. Because, I don't know, there have been some ragbrise where my, modern ragbrise, where my phone hasn't worked at all. Mm-hmm. There's just a lot of people... Um, I say the other thing that maybe that brought to mind is that the sag wagons usually stop at the fire stations in the meeting towns. So if you're looking for it and you're not sure, ask for the fire station. And that's a really easy way to go. The other thing that came to mind was that in the overnight towns, one popular way for uh, drivers to indicate to their riders where they're going to be parked is to have custom signs. Like there's pieces of paper that have their team logo on it, Mm -hmm. team name on it, and there'll be arrows and they will, point you exactly where to ride and where to turn so if you've lost lost your directions or if your phone isn't working those route arrows can be really handy so maybe that's something you want to arrange ahead of time with your uh team captain cool and we will as we get closer to july i know these questions will come up again um keep asking them because we will keep answering them right yeah absolutely okay yes we love answering them both on the just go bike podcast on social media However, it may be, um, we will, as we get a little bit closer to RAGBRAI, restart our RAGBRAI 101 series. Yes. Mark, you want to tell them a little bit about that? Yes. So RAGBRAI 101 are episodes, special episodes for RAGBRAI newbies, people who are doing RAGBRAI for the first time. And you can find those right here on the Just Go Bike podcast. Um, yeah. We just do a little bit more 
um, or a little bit different format in that yeah. you, the listener, can actually call into a phone number, leave a voicemail, and then we'll play that voicemail and then answer the question. And chances yeah. are really high that if it's a question you have, somebody else probably has the same question. So Yes, um, yes. And we have a special phone number. Yes, we do. It is 515-303-0385. And you can call that any time. So if in the middle of the night, you have a, you sit up in bed and say, oh, can, it, do I need waterproof socks <laughs> on Ragbri? Then yeah. you can call that hotline. You won't wake us up and uh, yeah. we may ask it or we may talk about it on a Ragbri 101. Yeah, it's a really cool way to do it. And truly, no question is too silly. No question is uh, too small. Just ask away, like Murph said, probably somebody's wondering about that same thing that you are. So yes. for the good of all, you don't have to say what your name is when you call in, you know? Right. So, right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Well, I, I think that we should maybe wrap it up for now. Um, keep the questions coming, but I, I do have one question for you, Andrea. Okay. And I can answer it first if you prefer, but when you think about all the rag brides that you've ridden, do you have a secret item that you bring on rag bri that makes your life better well i do and it is not just one item it's a series of items i oh. put everything in ziploc bags okay everything and you think okay that's silly people say that all the time it's for organization no it's for when it rains unexpectedly or it's dewy or just any sweaty you could put your sweat use sweaty clothes in ziploc bags mm -hmm. but it is so much nicer if you can come home. it's been raining all day and you come back to your tent and you unpack Oh, and you have a clean pair of clothing. It is heaven on earth. Yeah. Dry, dry clothing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that's a pretty common suggestion, but I think it's important. So how about you? What's your secret weapon on Rag Bride? Um, Mine is earplugs. Ooh, yeah. ooh. I like that one. And it's <laughs> it may be something that everyone, you know, some people may be listening and going, well, that's a no brainer. You should always bring earplugs. But there are people that <laughs> suffer greatly when they don't yes. have earplugs because regardless of if you're in the main campground or maybe you're in the RV with your family or whatever, you know, a homestay, there's always going to be somebody either snoring or breathing loud. There's always yeah. going to be zipping and unzipping of tents. And if you're camping next to Andrea, she's going to be in all those Ziploc bags <laughs> all night long. I know. I was just thinking our questions kind of go together. Our answers kind of go together. <laughs> yes. But I do the so, same yeah. thing with the Ziplocs. Like it, yeah. it's a little bit organization, but a lot moisture control. Like yes. if you have stinky socks, if let's say they got wet in the rain and now they're stinky and you tuck them in the side of your bag thinking that they won't touch everything. The next time you open mm. that bag, your whole bag's gonna smell like it. So smell. Get the zip. It's box. like a little, little stinky time capsule to yourself in the future when you get home to your washing machine, <laughs> or like if you truly don't like someone, you could release one on them. <laughs> It'd be really awful. Now I'm gonna watch for uh, sweaty socks in my bag next time I hang out with you, Andrea. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, I shouldn't have said anything. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, thank you so much, Andrea, for answering a lot of those um, frequently asked questions. And I'm going to speak on behalf of all the listeners. Thank you for all you've been doing to get us ready to hear the route. Absolutely. It is my pleasure. I'm happy to answer questions. If you see me on the street and you say, hey, P, I have a question, I'm happy to answer the question unless I have to go to the bathroom and then I'll come back to you. But uh, I do, I'm happy to answer questions at any time, any place, unless, yeah, I mean, within reason. But um, yeah, and it is a delight to get ready, especially for this really big Rag Rye 50 year. Okay, sounds good. Well, we'll see you next episode. Yep, squawk at you soon. That is it for this week. We both want to thank you for tuning in to listen to the Just Go Bike podcast. And if you'd like to contact us with a comment about the podcast, or maybe you have a topic in mind, you can reach us at justgobikepodcast at gmail.com, or you can also follow us on social media at Just Go Bike on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast, especially if you're a fan. And if you have any extra time, pop on over to the Morphology Podcast for more bike adventure interviews. All right, that's a wrap. We'll be back next week. Until then, just go bike!